video, how to lower your creatinine levels using the nutrient with the most powerful detoxing benefits. Gathering here, I've been helping CKD patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. During these years, I've seen people succeeding at what many considered impossible. Having stable improvements in GFR and other markers such as creatinine and blood sugar levels. In order to achieve this, the most important thing you need is the diet, no doubt about it. In fact, for some patients, finding foods that support their kidney health instead of harming it is all that it takes to start improving. Science is very clear on this. When we start to eat more foods that remove toxins instead of adding them, we can see some incredible results, especially if these foods contain a very specific super nutrient. But what is this super nutrient and how to get it? Well, this nutrient is in a certain part of this fruit, actually, in the peel. According to research, eating the part of the fruit we usually discard may lead to serious improvements in kidney health, as we can see, because of its fiber content. Yes, fiber is the nutrient with the most powerful detoxing benefits. In fact, in a study, researchers were even able to prove a link between higher fiber intake and a slower CKD progression. But keep in mind that not all fiber is created equal and that you need a specific amount of fiber to get the result. So this is what I want to focus on today, a proven way to make a big difference in protecting your kidneys from excess toxins. And keep in mind that one of the toxins this extra fiber can help remove is creatinine, all right? Now guys, something that everyone knows about dietary fiber is that people with diabetes are going to get the biggest benefits from it. How you may ask? Well, by adding some very specific types of fiber to their diet, says science. So this is what we are going to take a look at today. I'll start with fiber for people with diabetes, but we will see right after that also what kind of fiber to eat if you do not have diabetes. In the final part of the video, I will also share with you my personal protocol to use acacia fiber for creatinine levels, since many of you are asking about this in comment section. So stay tuned and let's start with diabetes immediately. Here's exactly what kind of dietary fiber you need to eat more of if your goal is to lower your fasting glucose levels naturally. So according to this large review of studies, if you have diabetes, you need to focus on three sources of fiber. First of all, on fiber from whole grains and also on beta-glucan mycelium. Okay, now you may ask, what whole grains are best for diabetes and CKD? I know that this is a controversial topic for some, but science tells us that for people with type 2 diabetes, adding whole grains with portion control can be very beneficial. This is a proven fact today. And there are some whole grains that can be especially healthy for CKD patients, both for people with or without diabetes. Very first is wild rice. Wild rice is probably the best rice there is for people with kidney problems. Wild rice can contain as much as 30 times the antioxidants as white rice. It is low on the glycemic scale and packs a lot more fiber than white rice, which is great for diabetes as we have seen. Wild rice also has some magnesium and B vitamins, all very healthy. Now, wild rice has only one problem. It's expensive and sometimes hard to find. Another whole grain I always recommend is barley. This is an amazing superfood. Barley is low in GI and phosphorus and it also boasts anti-inflammatory properties. Barley contains betaine, a nutrient that may help reduce inflammation. Barley is also rich in soluble fiber. What makes barley a superfood is also its content of magnesium, great to lower blood pressure, and of iron, great to fight anemia. 
barley can be your breakfast staple. You can find barley in flakes and that's great to make porridge for example. Barley is also easy to find compared for example to wild rice and relatively inexpensive. It's also very easy to prepare. Now guys, there is one breakfast staple that's probably even healthier than barley for people with diabetes. I'm talking about oats. Just like barley, oats are a great source of fiber and this means they can help you controlling your blood sugar levels. And as we have seen, one of the most important types of fiber for people with diabetes is beta-glucan. This is a type of soluble fiber that, once ingested, it will form a gel with water and act as a broom in your gut, carrying out all sorts of toxins. And this benefit is great for kidney disease patients. And I believe that the main reason why this fiber helps so much with diabetes is because it will help slow down digestion, preventing any insulin spike. Now guys, as I was saying, every single kidney disease patient needs more fiber, soluble fiber in particular. So let's take a look at some super healthy fruit and veggies to add to your diet. Let's start with Brussels sprouts. Okay guys, many, many vegetables are good sources of soluble fiber, especially if you eat them with the peel. And even if they don't have a peel, Brussels sprouts are definitely topping the list with 3.8 grams of fiber per 100 grams, half of which is super healthy soluble fiber. And while Brussels sprouts were once banned from the renal diet today, we know that they have a ton of benefits for your kidneys. They can help lower blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar levels. There are studies even linking an increased consumption of cruciferous veggies such as Brussels sprouts to a significantly decreased risk of type 2 diabetes. Another veggie that would help you get more soluble fiber during the day, carrots. Many people still believe that carrots are mostly there to help you see better. But while that is just a myth, there are many benefits of carrots that are actually supported by science. First of all, they are a great source of soluble fiber, especially if we compare grams of soluble fiber to grams of protein we get from carrots. Now, the soluble fiber in carrots is mainly pectin. Pectin is not just great to help gut health, it also binds to cholesterol in the intestine. So if you want to lower your cholesterol and triglycerides levels, also add carrots to your diet. Another great source of fiber, broccoli. Broccoli is definitely one of the healthiest foods on earth, a true powerhouse of nutrients. It's reputed to benefit digestion, the cardiovascular system, and the immune system. Research also tells us that eating broccoli fights the inflammation in the body. This little veggie also has detoxing properties very useful to lower your creatinine levels thanks to unique phytochemicals. These plant compounds aid all steps of the body's detoxification process, from activation to neutralization and elimination of contaminants. Not to mention the very high fiber content of broccoli, especially when compared to the small amount of calories this veggie has. Broccoli also contains beta-glucan that, as we have seen, is super healthy for those with diabetes. But what if you can't add these foods to your diet? Well, beta-glucan and fiber in general is something you can also supplement, alright? Beta-glucan in particular is especially marketed for people with cholesterol problems, but it can really help also with diabetes and kidney disease in general. If you are planning to take beta-glucan, doses taken in studies range from 2 to 6 grams daily for up to 12 weeks. I have no reason to believe that this fiber cannot be taken for longer, however. I mean, I have been eating foods rich in beta-glucan for all my life. In particular, a study found out that 5 grams a day were effective at improving glycemic control. Keep in mind that with fiber, you always want to start small and increase gradually, alright? Also, the best way for it to work is to take it about half an hour before the main meals, so 2 or 3 times a day. And there are also other supplements we can use. Now, there is a supplement in particular other than acacia fiber that I always recommend to all kidney disease patients. This includes
includes those with and without diabetes. I'm talking about psyllium husk. I personally take this one every day because it's also amazing for gut health and overall health. Psyllium husk is also super cheap compared to any other fiber supplement and you can definitely take it on the long term. It can help you achieve all the benefits we have seen until now, including improved blood sugar control and better kidney function. The way you take psyllium husk is by adding 5 to 10 grams twice a day in a large glass of water about half an hour before a meal. Remember that you want to drink lots of water if you are going to supplement fiber, right? Now, the reason why I'm recommending several types of fiber sources, foods, several supplements is because most people don't get enough fiber every day. This is a pretty high bar, by the way. You are supposed to get 38 grams of fiber if you are a man and 25 grams if you are a woman. In fact, as we can see, it's when you get to these amounts that you start to see the benefits in terms of kidney health. Dietary fiber, soluble in particular, is your main ally against uremic toxins such as creatinine. But not many people manage to eat all the fiber they need every day. This may be especially challenging if you need to limit the intake of whole grains or veggies or fruit. And as I was saying, there is another supplement you should consider, acacia fiber. When it comes to getting rid of excess toxins, including creatinine, acacia fiber is what I recommend. Acacia fiber is the gum that's naturally exuded by the acacia tree. And the reason why acacia fiber is interesting to us is its ability to actually absorb uremic toxins in the intestines. Because while all fiber can protect you from these toxins, acacia fiber is one of the few supplements that have actually been used as a form of intestinal dialysis. Acacia fiber was used in several end-stage renal disease patients with no residual kidney function who weren't able to tolerate dialysis. But instead of dialysis, they were given 1 gram of acacia fiber per kilograms of body weight per day. The result was shocking. The patients were able to go on for 4 years without dialysis and without any uremic symptoms at all. Yes, they were able to avoid the dialysis for years. So the question is, what is the right protocol to take acacia fiber? The way you take acacia fiber is pretty straightforward. First of all, find the right dose for you. As we have seen, people who needed to use it instead of renal replacement therapy have to take a huge dose, one gram of acacia fiber per kilograms of body weight per day. But if your goal is to protect your kidneys from toxins, you don't need that much, luckily. What I usually recommend is to take 2 to 4 tablespoons per day, mix with one big cup of water at least every time you take it. Just like the other fiber supplements, you want to take acacia fiber before the main meals. So for example, you could take 1 tablespoon before breakfast, 2 tablespoons before lunch, and 1 tablespoon before dinner. But don't start with this dose if you have never taken any fiber supplement. Start small and then increase the dose gradually. Don't forget to drink lots of water and obviously consult your doctor before making any change to your diet. Now, if you want to try acacia fiber, I have a link down in the description to an acacia fiber supplement that's made with the needs of kidney disease patients in mind. It's in the description, check it out. Remember that acacia fiber, like the other fiber supplements, may slow down the absorption of your prescription medications as well. And guys, if you want to learn more about how you can protect your kidney function, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.